Opening Reflection Awaken! During this time of Advent, we call upon our loving God to awaken our hearts with expectation and hope. During this time of distraction, we call upon our Creator to help us notice the Divine Presence abundantly shared and refocus our minds and transform our hearts. We wait in hope for Emmanuel, for the indwelling of God, to come into our lives, allowing us to see the emerging light through the darkness. Free us from all that binds us to the darkness and show us the light, your light, that radiates in each of us. May we recognize your dwelling within us and among us. May we be your light in our communities and a healing balm in our wounded world. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locust and wild honey. At that time Jerusalem, all of Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. For those of us who live in a world of great complexity, it comes as no surprise when we read in Scripture, the history of our world has always been of great complexity. So our readings today are really inviting us to put ourselves in a situation, in a position to reflect on what it means to say that God is with us, that God is for us, that God is guiding us. And each one of the readings has a particular emphasis that helps us to locate ourselves in our own place and time with a little more compassion, maybe a little more self-understanding. In the reading from Isaiah, we hear the stump of Jesse and that bud that will come forth. It's the promise of Messiah. It's the promise of the healing of the world. It's the promise of the fullness of all God has said will happen. We believe in that to this day, but so often we think the Messiah has to come in a sense dressed like we are, thinking like we do, speaking like we do. And it's very clear that so many things that are spoken of in Isaiah and the rest of the prophets are really so much larger than our usual concerns. And he's really talking about poverty, not as an economic concern, but as a spiritual one. He's talking about spiritual and physical violence, not as a offshoot of a political system or an economic system, but as something that undermines the people. And I think it's very, very powerful and passionate that at the end of the reading we come across that great line that says, there shall be no harm or ruin in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. And we are asked to find and to live on that holy mountain, not as those who have won, but as those who have reached out, those who have learned to share and learned to trust and to believe in one another, so that we can find a world where the poor are cared for, where the political refugee is not abandoned, where there is no violence to no purpose, 
And so Isaiah is saying, that's how the bud will sprout, that the stump of Jesse will bring forth something wonderful and new and complete. And Paul, of course, prided himself very much in Romans and other letters on being the apostle to the Gentiles. He knew all the Jews, he knew all the people who led the people of the circumcision. He called Peter out on the very legalities that had shaped his own life. But suddenly he realized that when Jesus came, all of those rules took on a different meaning and a different context. And so he says very clearly that he's being called and we're being called to be a light to the Gentiles. And the question for us is, who are our Gentiles? Where are we self-righteous? Where are we sure that we have the truth? Where are we sure that God is on our side? Then we need to take two or three steps back, like Paul, and realize that God is saying, my vision is so much larger than that. I'm not here so that you can be right. I'm here so that you can be loving. And finally, in the Gospel, we have that marvelous scene. John the Baptist is not someone you would invite to an English tea party. He was a little gruff and rough and brusque and right to the point. So when he sees the Sadducees and the Pharisees who are always at each other's necks, you can put in your own religious or political parties of today, it's the same game. He called them a brood of vipers. Not because they believed in the tradition of their people, not because they tried to understand the way of God through the law, but because they got caught in this hypocritical self-righteousness. They got caught in this spirit of thinking, I've got God in my pocket, and what I want is what God wants. And John the Baptist had a vision of the Christ who was to come and knew that God could not be bothered with such trivialities. So when he calls them a brood of vipers, it's not for what shaped them, it's for how they misshaped what was given. And so he's asking them to do the same thing, to take that step back that St. Paul had to take back, that the people of Israel in exile had to take back from their assumptions, from their presumptions about what is absolutely God's calling, what is absolutely God's word for them and for us in the world. I don't have to allude to a certain date and a certain activity in our own country in these recent months that has destabilized so many people's lives, self-perceptions, and sense of what it means to have politics, to have democracy, to have freedom. We're given the same complex invitation that we find in today's readings. Can we look to that stump of Jesse, to that bud that comes, that leads us to serve the poor, to be just to those who are misused, to find ways to be reconciled, to dwell on God's holy mountain with no harm and no ruin? Can we be like Paul, willing to leave behind our prejudices and our presuppositions, to reach out to so many who really need to know that God's love is for them and through us? And finally, like John the Baptist, we have to call one another out. That means the people who agree with us as well as those who disagree. To find that place in God's vision for the world that isn't filled with our petty tyrannies, that isn't filled with our fears, that isn't filled with our desires for self-fulfillment over the fulfillment of God's kingdom. And so today we can once again reach out in prayer and say, help us to be those who would remove all ruin and harm from the holy mountain of God.